Today we're going to talk about how to program the Cyber Gauge 360. Um, today I'm going to program just a little test part that we got from our friends at Polyworks. It's a 3D printed uh, piece that I'm just going to put into the machine right now. Um, in our current setup, we're using our mounting pins in order to hold the part, although we do have other methods of holding onto the part, which include uh, a vacuum fixture and a glass plate. In this case, we just put the part on the pins and it holds it in place. Close the door and are ready to start programming. So the first thing we do is we make sure that we are open and set up in the quick scan interface, which is our engineering interface uh, for the cyber gauge. Uh, we want to figure out exactly how to set up our settings to scan this thing. So we go into our settings tab, and here we have the ability to make changes to a bunch of different parameters that uh, will tell us how to scan. The first one is scan positions. Uh, that is the number of times that rotary stage that we put the part on is going to index. So every time we index it, we'll be scanning it from a different angle, which will make it uh, easier for us to see different portions of the part as it rotates. While I'm setting things up, I find it useful to actually set that to one, so it's only going to scan from one position. Uh, this lets me play with the uh, settings of the scanners themselves in order to figure out exactly what the best uh, settings are uh, without having to wait for a whole scan to finish. The other settings we have here is the DLP intensity, and I've actually got two DLP in intensities, one labeled DLP and the other one labeled extended range. But basically what that is is the brightness of the projector um, when it shines down on the part. Uh, the the uh, idea here is that typically for a darker or a shinier part you would ha use a higher DLP intensity than you would for something that's uh, a lighter, uh, say, matte finish type of part. So something that's maybe like a a white with uh, a nice matte finish on it would maybe scan at 10 or 15 percent and something that's really dark black and shiny would scan at about 100 percent. What we have in here now is a whitish part although it is slightly translucent which means we'll probably need a little bit more light so I'm gonna make a guess and slide my slider down to about 20 percent. I'm gonna temporarily turn off the extended range what extended range does is it actually runs a scan twice at two different intensities and then the software decides for every point which intensity is best and what has the highest quality. Um, for what I'm doing right now I just want to see what I can do for the main setting and then turn the extended range on later. We'll talk about that in a minute. We also have a point quality filter and what that does is it checks the quality of the data as it's coming back. Um, I like to think of it as a bandpass filter on the brightness, but it's not exactly what it is, but it serves its purpose. Basically, we set that uh, right now to the minimum of about 100 all the way up to about 1500. Um, the higher we set it, the more data we're going to throw out. Uh, the lower we set it, the more we're going to keep. At this point, I'm just going to leave it at 1000. Point density, obviously, is going to be how far apart are the points for every scan and this slider goes from 75 microns all the way up to 225 and 25 micron increments. This is a big part, so I'll probably run with maybe 175 microns, basically. No small features on it, so we don't really care uh, that we get tight point spacing. So this will speed things up a little bit because we don't have to process as much data. So I just click OK on this and we set our, our properties, and I click the Run button, and it will do a quick single position scan from both the top and bottom sensors. So we should get data from the top and data from the bottom in a few seconds here. So now we can see we're essentially done. Polyworks will be finishing the mesh right here. And that's my scan. So I'm looking at this from a very from a single position. The uh, part is essentially arranged, pointing the sensors the way we're looking at it right now. So um, you know you can kind of see how the projector comes in, where the shadows line up, and so forth. This actually looks pretty good to me. We're really close to the settings we need. So I might turn my extended range on. So go back to settings, turn the extended range on, set it to maybe a quarter or so of what the upper value is and what this helps with is uh, when we're scanning oblique surfaces and scanning other surfaces that uh, that may you know reflect direct backly uh, directly back at the, the camera then we can actually get 
uh, you know, a better setting for that. We'll use maybe a lower intensity when it's reflecting directly back at the camera um, and not worry about some, some noisy blooms and things like that that might show up. So we'll try that and see if it makes any difference. <clears throat> so again, 10 or 15 seconds later, we'll have another scan. And there is not much of a performance hit when uh, using extended range. It is a slight bit slower than, uh, than not using it, but I would say in the realm of maybe 5 or 10%. So if anything, we're getting slightly better coverage in the holes. Um, while I'm on the subject of holes, I should mention, um, owing to the triangulation angle between the projector that's projecting the fringes down onto this uh, object and the camera that's actually reading them, we can only see down a hole roughly the diameter of the hole. Um, and so you'll see this right here. As we rotate the part around, however, we're going to fill it in a lot more data, so we actually will be able to get a cylinder in there when we decide we want to program a cylinder. So now we think we got enough, uh, or got our settings set properly to actually pick up the surface of the part. Uh, I'm going to determine how many rotary positions we need, and on a part like this, and anything orthogonal, particularly things that have uh, significant internal geometry like this guy does in the pocket, uh, I'll want to use probably about eight positions. And that's going to ensure that, especially on these inside corners, I'll get at least three scans overlapping uh, on it. So if we click Run now, we'll get our scan. So this should take a few minutes, typically about three, to get the complete scan. You'll also notice on the bottom we have a uh, timer down here in the shape of a pie. Uh, this is going to indicate how many rotary positions we actually are going to use for this scan, and as we uh, walk around, it will start filling up the pie with uh, pie pieces, basically. And uh, in this case, we have eight, so every 45 degrees we're scanning the part out. So when it gets all the way around, we're done. Another thing I can note is you're watching it scan the bottom side. You can see the shadows from the pins, but you can't see the pins themselves, and that's because we're using the point quality filter right now, um, and in conjunction with a lower DLP setting for the white material. Um, we're actually able to filter darker materials out from the scan um, simply by getting these settings right, and that means we don't have to clean anything up at the end. <coughs> So we're done scanning. It's now taking all of the individual scans and combining them. So Polyworks will combine, in this case, there are actually 32 different scans that it's combining into one single mesh. So that takes a few seconds to complete, and once that's complete, we have our scan. Here we go. So this looks pretty good to me. We can actually see in here some of the uh, structure from the 3D print, which I find is uh, pretty good indication that we've got our settings correct. We've got a few areas in here where we don't have data anywhere where you see the dark blue. Um, you're actually looking through to the other side of the part. So that's where we don't have data on that surface. Most of these areas are non-critical. If we decided we needed to get more data on that, we would just add a few more rotary positions. So if we want to program this now, 
to do an inspection, we would import a CAD model into Polyworks and go through our standard Polyworks inspection procedures. So we'll just do something simple here. So I'll just go in here and grab my CAD model. It should be on the desktop. So here's my CAD model. So the first thing we want to do is set up an alignment between the CAD and the data. So we just go to our best fit and set it up for an automatic best fit. Click start. And just like that, it's aligned. Now we could very easily on this set up some datum alignments and things like that, but uh, that's a bit complex for the video we're doing today. So we're just going to leave it as this. So the next step, um, at a minimum, you would probably want to do a color error map on this to determine exactly what's wrong with the part. Is it good? Is it bad? Uh, not. Nah. So we click on the color error map icon, click measure, and in a second or two we will have our color error map. So this is showing us in full color the deviations of the actual scan data from the CAD model. So anything that's in the green, if we look at the color scale over here on the right, um, would fall within, say, plus or minus a, a millimeter, let's say, of uh, the CAD surface on the outside, and anything in the bluer color down here would be the negative. And then we can also see right here, around the 3D logo, that we're about a millimeter and a half small uh, on that surface. And that's because the 3D logo itself has got some undercuts on it in the part, but that logo isn't even on the CAD. So um, we can tell that just by looking at the error map which is kind of nice. Um, but knowing that we're not getting any errors that are any greater than a, a millimeter and a half, we might want to adjust the scale on this so that we can actually see what's going on. So we can open up the scale editor here, and I'll just change the top end of this to something like two millimeters, plus and minus. So now, anywhere where there's something Worse. So if we take a look over on this edge here, we can see that this is actually a small surface, this blue surface here next to the hole over here. So that surface, at least in this alignment, is smaller than the rest. And then if we come around the other side, we can actually see the hole on the other side is big. So it's as though that entire surface area was moved towards the outside of the part. And by about three quarters to a millimeter. So now that that's created, um, we could go in and start creating cross sections or 3D features and do actual measurements on the part. That's more of a, uh, a Polyworks programming thing. So I think at this point, we'll just leave it off here, create a report from this and show you how to save everything. So let's just do a quick report. What's fun in Polyworks is all I have to do is set a pose like this the way I like it and then take a snapshot. So I've just taken a snapshot of that. You'll notice in the tree, now we actually have a report uh, showing up in there. So let's just set a few more poses, take a few more pictures. This will show our people exactly what's wrong with the part. I think that's good. So let's take a look and see what we actually captured for pictures. So I'll just double click on the report. So I've got five pictures that I picked up and it shows you the color scale on the right and you get to see what we were talking about for uh, the various different positions. There's a lot more that we can add to this. We can do full, like I say, 3D measurements on features. We can take cross sections and do measurements on those. We can do GD and T if that's required. And all of this uh, can be added to the report. Once this is done, then we just commit inspection to database here. And what this does is it saves all of the inspection that we did in Polyworks, regardless of what it is, in addition to the scan settings. So once that's saved, then it shows up in our inspection uh, interface. We can go into the pull down menu, uh, find the inspection and actually run it. So I'll click inspect, and we'll just call this test one, and say okay. Just like that, you've got an inspection. In summary, basically, the process 
for putting together an, inspect an inspection on the cyber gauge is simply a matter of figuring out what your settings are, applying those, and then creating a standard Polyworks inspection following standard operating procedures in Polyworks. It's really quite that simple.